progenitors, like the early on developmental stem cells. So you cells. start from one zygote, and that's a totipotent cell type. It can do anything. You then different. You you know that cell divides, 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 and then every cell division is leading to specialization where you now have a mesodermal lineage, an ectodermal lineage, an endodermal lineage that basically leads to different parts of your, of your, of your body. The ectoderm will basically give rise to your skin. Ecto means outside, derm is skin. So ectoderm, but it also gives rise to your neurons and your whole brain. So that's a lot of ectoderm. Mesoderm gives rise to your internal organs, including the vasculature and you know your muscle and stuff like that. So you basically have this progressive differentiation. And then if you look further, further down that lineage, you basically have one lineage that will give rise to both your muscle and your bone, but also your fat. And if you go further down the lineage of your fat, you basically have your white fat cells these are the cells that store energy. So when you eat a lot, but you don't exercise too much, there's an excess uh, set of calories, like excess energy. What do you do with those? You basically create, you spend a lot of that energy to create these high energy molecules, lipids, which you can then burn when you need them on a rainy day. Mm -hmm. So that leads to obesity if you don't exercise and if you overeat because your body is like, oh great, I have all these calories, I'm gonna store them. Ooh, more calories, I'm gonna store them too. Ooh, more calories. And the, you know, 42% of European chromosomes have a predisposition to storing fat, which was selected probably in the, you know, food scarcity periods. Like basically as we were exiting Africa, you know, before and during the ice ages, mm -hmm. you know, there was probably a selection to those individuals who made it north to basically be able to store energy, you know, a lot more energy. So you basically now have this lineage that is deciding whether you want to store energy in your white fat or burn energy in your beige fat. It turns out that your fat is, you know, we, like we, um, we have such a bad view of fat. Fat is your best friend. Fat can both store all these excess lipids that would be otherwise circulating through your you know, body and causing damage, but it can also burn calories directly. If you have too much of uh, energy, you can just choose to just burn some of that as heat. So basically when you're cold, you're burning energy to basically warm your body up and you're burning all these lipids and you're burning all these calories. So what we basically found is that across the board, genetic variants associated with obesity across many of these regions were all enriched repeatedly in mesenchymal stem cell enhancers. So that gave us a hint as to which of these genetic variants was likely driving this whole association. And we ended up with this one genetic variant called RS142185. And that genetic variant out of the 89 was the one that we predicted to be causal for the disease. Wow. So going back to those steps, first step is figure out the relevant tissue based on the global enrichment. Second step is figure out the causal variant among many variants in this linkage disequilibrium, in this co-inherited block between these recombination hotspots, these boundaries of these inherited blocks. That's the second step. The third step is once you know that causal variant, try to figure out what is the motif that is disrupted by that causal variant. Basically, how does it act? Variants don't just disrupt elements, they disrupt the binding of specific regulators. Mm -hmm. So basically the third step there was, how do you find the motif that is responsible, like the gene regulatory word, the building block of gene regulation that is responsible for that dysregulatory event? And the fourth step is finding out what regulator normally binds that motif and is now no longer able to bind. And then once you have the regulator, can you then try to figure out how to, what, uh, after it developed, how to fix it? That's exactly right. You now know how to intervene. You have basically a regulator, you have a gene that you can then perturb and you say, well, maybe that regulator has a global role in obesity. I can perturb the regulator. Just to clarify, when we say perturb, like on the scale of a human life, mm -hmm. Can a human being be helped? Of course, I, of course. 
Yeah, so I perturbed. guess understanding is the first step. Exactly. Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, but perturbed basically means you now develop therapeutics, pharmaceutical therapeutics against that. Or you develop other types of intervention that affect the expression of that gene. 